The romantic 1960s version of The Lone Biker was popularized by the short-lived series Then Came Bronson, with a similar premise to shows like Route 66, Highway to Heaven, and yes, even The Incredible Hulk, Jim Bronson travels the country on his Harley Davidson Sportster, acting as the agent of change for the troubled and lonely souls he encounters. In many ways, the character of Jim Bronson epitomizes the modern dictionary definition of a stoic, self-sufficient person living life by his own rules. Each day he climbs aboard his chosen machine, calmly, without emotion, ready to accept whatever the road may dish out. Heat, cold, rain, wind, potholes, road construction, and crazy drivers, whatever the challenges, he is ready to accept adapt, and overcome. As travelers, it is easy for us touring motorcyclists to identify with this characterization, and it is understandable why many of us are finding value in the ancient Greek philosophical constructs of Stoicism. Thanks to people like Ryan Holiday, who operates the Daily Stoic website, YouTube channel, and podcast, Stoic Thought has made a resurgence and helps many people make sense of the seemingly crazy world we are living in. The roots of Stoicism can be found more than 2,000 years in the past, about 300 years before the birth of Christ, when a man named Zeno lost everything he owned in a shipwreck. This misfortune forced him to reevaluate his life and eventually gave rise to what we now call Stoicism. Stoic thought would go on to be one of the major schools of philosophy until Constantine and the Roman Empire ultimately converted to Christianity between 300 and 400 AD. Chief among the Stoic philosophers were names like Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius, who is considered to be the last good Roman emperor. The Meditations of Marcus Aurelius is today considered by many to be one of the primary sources of Stoic thought. Let me stop here and point out that I do not consider myself to be a Stoic any more than I am a Buddhist, Taoist, or Christian. Rather than look for dogmatic practices and rules, I prefer to find basic concepts that resonate with me and that I know or at least believe to be true. These concepts are not mystical in nature, but rather simple ways of thinking and approaching living that make life better and hopefully help me to be a better person. Although I freely admit that I do not always live up to that ideal. I have also found that many of these old school teachings have common themes, and I will discuss some of those during this video. With that in mind, let's take a look at the four basic pillars of Stoic thought. The first pillar is wisdom which is defined as not acting out of passion or impulse, but rather by making intelligent and moral choices. Probably the wisest of all choices is to know what is worthy of your consideration and what is not. The second pillar is courage. For Stoics, this is remaining strong and in control of one's emotions, regardless of what the outside world throws at you. As with many of the ancient philosophies, they often draw from each other, and I think these first two pillars can be summed up with the Christian serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. These same ideas can be described in more modern terms as learning to be more stingy about what we choose to give a fuck about. Author Mark Manson put it this way, Because when we give too many fucks, we choose to give a fuck about everything, then we feel as though we are perpetually entitled to feel comfortable and happy at all times. That's when life fucks us. Epictetus put this even more simply. 
If you yourself don't choose what thoughts and images you expose yourself to, someone else will. The third pillar of Stoic thought is temperance, or acting with restraint and self-control, not allowing yourself to get caught up in addictions, bad habits, or overindulgences. Temperance can be thought of as not allowing yourself to get caught up in arguments about things we cannot change, like the behavior of others. And the final or fourth pillar of Stoic thought is justice, or treating others with respect. This is probably the most overlooked of the four pillars. We have a tendency to focus on the teachings of inner strength, but less so on how we should treat other people. The Stoic philosopher Masonius Rufus said this, To honor quality, to want to do good, and for a person being human, to not want to harm human beings. This is the most honorable lesson, and it makes just people out of those who learn it. The idea of societal justice seems very consistent, at least to me, with how Christ told us to treat each other. We should love our neighbors and even our enemies as we would ourselves. We should treat others as we would like to be treated. We should not judge or condemn each other, and we should learn to forgive. Buddhism, in turn, speaks with similar sentiments. Treat all, including your greatest enemy, with reverence. And the greater the enemy, the greater the respect and reverence you should have. This is the Buddhist way, and it should be your standard for all behavior. I know that strict followers of Stoicism will rightly say that I have oversimplified things, as will those of the other religions I have mentioned. But for me, there is one overarching concept that is consistent throughout these forms of ancient wisdom. When we get down to it, what we truly have control over is our internal environment, our thoughts and reactions to what the outside world throws at us. If we want to make a better world, we need to start with ourselves. Modern Stoics like Ryan Holiday will talk about the obstacles of life, whereas Buddhists will say that life is filled with suffering. Regardless of how it is expressed, the concept is the same. We cannot control the outside world. We cannot control what other people do or what Mother Nature places in our paths. But we can control how we view these challenges and how we react to them. The mind adapts and converts to its own purpose the obstacles to our acting. The impediment of action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. This, of course, seems paradoxical, but it is echoed in Buddhism as well as in Taoism. The way to overcome obstacles is not to fight against them, but to yield and embrace them. The Tao Te Ching, verse 78, says, Nothing in the world is as soft and yielding as water, yet for dissolving the hard and inflexible, nothing can surpass it. The soft overcomes the hard, the gentle overcomes the rigid. Everyone knows this is true, but few can put it into practice. Therefore, the master remains serene in the midst of sorrow. Evil cannot enter his heart. Because he has given up helping, he is the people's greatest help. Truth is often paradoxical. As I am getting ready to embark on a long motorcycle trip, these ancient truths are in my thoughts. Yes, I have planned and packed and prepared, but there are always things I cannot control. The road will bring obstacles that I cannot foresee or avoid. When things become hard, I must be soft. When the roads are bumpy, I must be flexible. This trip I will attempt to ride with wisdom, courage, temperance, 
and justice. Ride safe and keep squeezing your lemon. If you enjoyed this video on motorcycling and a little philosophical thought, here's a couple more that you should check out.